social area analysis approach social area analysis to urban land now this is a relatively modern relatively new point of view new approach for studying for understanding urban land use methodology and then why is this required because before this the morphological approach occurred that is the concentric zone and all those things occurred the reason being the concentric zone theory that is a morphological theories those could not be applied to many american and non american cities already we have studied about this in our previous lectures in the criticisms how that could not be applied to various non american cities and even uh, it does not it is not applicable for today's cities or cities after 1960s because there were so much of complexities had come after that so that required for the various other theories to develop so the other theories developed based upon what based upon empirical analysis this is most important empirical analysis that was just some general segregation but the, it is important empirical analysis is important because when it is empirically true then it can be that model can be applied elsewhere also so because of the limited applicability of the previous uh, previous theories that we saw that is the concentric sector and multiple so the urban scholars they tried to offer new explanations to the various patterns of the city so that brought about this social area analysis now this analysis it grew out of from what's a uh, discussion in the 1938 but it was it was these two people it were these two people this is ashraf shefki and marilyn williams in 1949 it is their work that is the work uh, name was social area analysis so it is their work which helped in the identification and description of areas according to their social characteristics so according to them according to shefki and uh, williams an urban land use could not be explained only in the terms of social characteristics like it was uh, done in the morphological approach only through social characteristics like only through residential characteristics no that was not uh, how a society or an urban area could be explained according to shefki and uh, williams so what they did is that they took these things these three important things social rank family status and ethnicity social rank family status and ethnicity so they took these three things social rank one family status another and ethnicity as the uh, important uh, prerequisites to study about the about any society about any urban area so and their technique was based upon what their technique was based this empirical basis so their technique was based upon statistical procedure based upon certain variables so based upon certain variables they did what they used certain statistical procedure what they used we will see later on and this variables could be differentiated um, uh, into economic variable and social variable so based upon these variables they based their theories and that is how they came up with this uh, new theory and they uh, according to them a city could not be understood without considering the society that created it now what there are certain features what are the features the first feature is that like i had told you before it employs statistical techniques the previous one was in that is a morphological analysis where uh, utilizing certain social uh, characteristics but from here starts the use of statistical techniques from saa starts the use of statistical procedures and techniques now why statistical procedure required because they were dealing with large scale data of diverse population we will see that in the next slides what kind of diverse population another thing is that it was not applied to all the american cities it was based on los angeles and san francisco 
and this is a method of identifying areas occupied by homogeneous people groups so uh, what about homogeneous people groups and everything that we will uh, see and this uh, approach was very much popular in 1970s before uh, that in 1960 already the quantitative revolution had taken place so the, this was a method of identifying areas occupied by homogeneous people group and another thing is that this social area analysis it is based upon the thought that our society is very complex it is not so easy like what um, in the concentric zone theory it is a complex modern society and because of that there are various forces which distinguishes the modern from the modern uh, society from the traditional society so what are the forces these are the three primary forces what they are increase in social stratification which leads to advanced job skills lifestyle changes and weaker family state of values which results in family structure uh, force then we have mixed population ethnic difference continued migration which results in residential mobility so these are the primary uh, forces that shape primary identities that shape urban population so based on the all these things we have certain indicators certain variables so what are the variables these are the three variables socio economic status family status and ethnic status because according to this it was a residential differentiation that has been explained at the various zonal level in this method the various residential differences has been explained and that residential differences based upon these three variables so based upon this socio economic status family status and ethnic status what we have we have the these above three things these constructs these things that is if based upon socio economic status depends our rank in the society based upon family status depends urbanization and life cycle stage based upon ethnic status depends social segregation like the various ethnic groups are separated so socially separated i have already given you examples from toronto in canada so based upon that we have this this constructs these things now when we are uh, speaking about social area analysis so the socio economic status family status and ethnic status so social status it causes change in the range and intensity of socio economic relationships family status results in changes in economic function and family roles and ethnic status results in a variety of origins and differentiation of people now this what are the various dimensions how they are measured and their effects on space now social status how it was measured now this is according to shevky and bell now social status this variable this variable was measured this uh, was measured by what are the various uh, variables how it is measured it is measured by census variables like income occupation education so these are the various ways in which the socio economic status well, um, then uh, rented or um, uh, place or own place or like employment status um, uh, not only occupation but status of that or education level ownership of various items maybe ownership of cars etc so that resulted in social status in family status these are the various ways in which the family status was measured that is uh, again census uh, one important thing is that in uh, saa they took shefki and bell because it was a very large data very large data they were using so they used census this is this was also called a census tracts so census variables were used for these variables for these indicators so like for family what are the, uh, the census variables were used like these so the number of children the age and gender ratio the marital status 
number of person per household type of vehicles so these were used as family status in ethnic status what was used ethnicity mother tongue country of origin uh, then uh, length of residency because this dealt with the immigrants so length of uh, residency movement patterns etc so these resulted in this assimilation model this uh, when you plug in all these three then what will happen this will give rise to a special pattern i have already told you that it was considered as an organism which changes through space and time so this gives rise to special patterns which results in these things so best uh, ability to afford best land housing lifestyle assimilation models etc now these are the various uh, status social economic indicators and the variables that were taken for income uh, census variables what was taken the average income the percentage of population of a cutoff level etc so for like housing size it was taken as a number uh, per square feet of people or like for uh, uh, the housing values the average uh, value of housing owned so all these things so this socio economic status or uh, the status that has been mentioned uh, in the previous slide over here that is the social status family status and the ethnic status now why uh, these are important now about these are the three forces these are the three forces so like to begin with the socio economic status this uh, differentiates this reflects now why shefki and bell had taken this why not anything else because this Uh, during that time it is uh, speak about 1950s or 60s that was the post world war 2 just try to find out when the world war 2 uh, occurred so that was the post post world war 2 uh, time and the economy was also post world war 2 economy during that time so during that time this reflected the economic activities the socio economic this is not only social but this is actually socio economic status so this reflects the economic activities in the during that time that is the post world war 2 industrial economy and during this time the educated the high income households they tended to live in sectors which was similar to hoyt we will see that in some upcoming slide so they tended to live in hoyt so we see that saa was also influenced by the classical models also because the socio economic status the high income households they tended to live in separate sectors that is uh, the sector model as identified by hoyt when we speak about family status it actually meant urbanization according to shefki and bell so that reflected the importance of family and demographic pattern in that society because when you have Uh, this migration that is also related to demography so the during the post world war 2 during that time if you see the demographic uh, demography of post world war 2 during that time there was a dramatic increase in childbirth it was also called the baby boom that time was also called the post world war 2 decade was also called the baby boom and during that time what else happened there were development of urban sprawls and fringe areas so the singles the single people or the childless couple or the older households they try to concentrate in the center zones center zones so again comes the concentric zone model so they uh, came to the central places while the others with bigger uh, families they moved out so the concentric zone theory comes over here and then we find the ethnic status so ethnic status was uh, according to the multiple need like we will see in details about these things what i have told just now in some upcoming slides now i have tried to make you understand how this works now just take for example this uh, picture that i have drawn over here this is a region having this has been segregated into four regions i have already said that saa deals with what homogeneous representation of empirical data 
so if that is there so if we are mapping the empirical data into homogeneous sets so i have done the same thing over here i have mapped the empirical data so what empirical data i have mapped the socio economic uh, since it is uh, socio economic so the various socio economic uh, uh, variables i have mapped that is for example this red may uh, take for example red is income red represents red color it represents income uh, this uh, green uh, represents maybe occupation blue may be education and star means high this symbol means moderate this is low so you find that is in a we find high income high occupation high education now it is very much obvious that a person who will have a uh, high who will get very good education maybe uh, very good high education obviously that person will have a uh, high occupation if it is well he is very well employed and obviously he will have a uh, high income so this region has got high uh, these three factors now this region homogeneously it has been segregated into moderate factors this has been segregated into low factors this is a mixed zone of high and moderate family status again the same area has been differentiated into certain family status so the red means the dwelling type the green uh, color means the age and gender ratio and the blue color means the type of vehicle maybe two wheeler four wheeler etc so obviously a person having a four wheeler will have a more family status than a person who is having a two wheeler that was the concept no now uh, see this star again means high moderate low single married so that means over here we are finding high uh, dwelling type so the dwelling type the nature of the building is very high or the nature of the houses are are very good so high dwelling type the age and gender ratio is also high type of uh, vehicle is also high maybe they are all owning high end cars we are finding here two married uh, family and one single now this region is having what this region is having a moderate kind of uh, things so moderate this has been mapped accordingly that in this region it has been found it has been found that moderate dwelling type is there moderate age and gender and uh, type of vehicle etc so this is a family status this has been segregated according to family status now this is the ethnic status now for example this region is uh, has has uh, bengali speaking and hindi speaking people now i have uh, segregated this as bengali speaking christians so there are two things which has been shown over here first is their language and their religion because both of this they are examples of ethnicity so here this means this person is a uh, this thing blue indicates christian uh, green indicates muslim and orange indicates hindu so this cross uh, this uh, yes cross indicates a bengali so that means and this x indicates hindu so that means over here we find we have a homogeneity of christian population over here we are seeing be it bengali be it uh, this thing uh, we are having a homogeneity of not only uh, this thing we are having homogeneity of bengali speaking population not only christian bengali speaking population so we are having bengali christian bengali christian bengali muslim bengali hindu and only one uh, hindi hindi speaking christian population so this has been homogeneously this is a empirically mapped as homogeneous population of these people this over here we are finding that over here uh, mostly we are finding what hindu population over here, just like over here we are finding christian population so over here we are finding hindu population over here uh, so over these are the three hindu uh, sectors one muslim and over here again another hindu speaking so this has been segregated like that according to the ethnic status now what shefty and well did was that these three variables so these three variables the ethnic status the uh, this thing uh, 
the family status and the socioeconomic status this was super imposed on each other and this is what they got the various uh, maps were super imposed on each other and this is what was obtained so what was obtained so this is according to social area analysis of shefki and bell in 1955 so this area as you are seeing over here this map this shows a social rank this shows a social rank so the uh, the dark spots so this map was given by them this is not given by me this was given by shefki and bell in 1955 so they map and this is based upon san francisco this is based upon san francisco city now this the dark zones are the areas having high social rank the dark zones over here are the areas having high family status the points over here means the segregated zones maybe ethnic segregation this is social status family status ethnic status ethnic segregation based upon these three they come out with a composite map which has features of these three and then you see check this legend over here now this means it has high social rank and high family status the dark zones high social rank high family status this zone means low social rank and or sim but it may be uh, it is low social rank it is other low social ranks area and again over here this is another pattern so this shows it is low family status so over here we are finding high family status this is horizontal so over here we are finding these areas low family status this uh, another uh, this is a clustered this is a matrix this matrix is found over here which shows uh, low social rank and this is lowest social rank and these are the various segregated zones so this is how they came up with social area analysis maps based upon the various variables based upon the various indicators that i told you about and they based the ultimate maps based upon inter correlation uh, uh, by interposing the superimposing they based the original map by superimposing the three variable maps now these are the various uh, this is about summary and the criticism now what is the uh, in summary what we can say that this is it signifies a statistical procedure of analyzing analyzing large scale data of diverse population and it became popular uh, after during the 1950s and the second summary is that according to shefki and bell the social uh, area generally contains person having the same level of living the same way of life and the same ethnic background this is according to uh, shefki and bell so we can say the person living in particular type of social area they would obviously they would be different with respect to their characteristics attitude and behaviors than people who are living in some other social area like in the maps that i have shown you now these are the various criticism first is first more of a theoretical based second the same this is more of a capitalist society this was based from a capitalist society we can't say that the same is true for a socialist society also now this is more deductive why deductive because in social area analysis the identified factors that shape this urban uh, space that shape the uh, urban space that we saw what are the various factors the three important factors so uh, in social area analysis they identified the factors that shape the urban space and that was identified when prior to the analysis itself and then they attempted to use the data to quantify the factors so this is a deductive way of approach so they use a deductive way of approach the first they identified the various factors and then they used the data to prove the factors so this was one of the most important criticism uh, as given by uh, the various scholars after uh, this theory came in, came uh, came also 
the researchers it is not fully empirical analysis and this kind of urbanization is not always found in everywhere like the kind of urbanization that has been given over here is not same everywhere so these are the various uh, criticism and of course this is also uh, to some scholars it seems that this is a self fulfilling process that is they are giving the answers first okay these are the various answers this is a social variable this is the economic variable we must use this and based upon their answers they are trying to find the questions